for people that are going down that road, you know, whether they're in the beginning of depression mm -hmm. or or in the thick of it, what are how do people get ahead of it? You the, know, I think a lot of people wait too damn long right. before they start to seek any type of advice or help or, or anything. What, when do they start? Every single uh, faith tradition that I've known anything about, worldwide, historical and otherwise, has some aspect of something we call confession. And we've made confession about saying all the bad things you've done it's more the act of sitting down and looking at somebody and saying, I'm not okay. And I think it's the great David Kessler, the grief researcher who says, grief demands a witness. There's gotta be something that I can sit down and look at somebody and say, hey, I'm not doing all right. That is, that's step one into healing, saying it out loud, writing it. People call my show and I was new to this whole thing and they were calling in so often and none of these calls made the air, I don't think, but they would, they'd end up editing them out. They'd call me and tell me, hey, I just cheated on my wife. I don't to, how do I have this conversation with her? Um, I hit my kid a little too hard. What do I, like, what do, I do now? Uh, fill in the blank. My first question to them was like, dude, why are you calling me? To a person, every answer was, dude, I got nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. I got nobody. And so it's creating a context, creating a world so that um, if I get to that moment, I can uh, reach out and call somebody. Now, you and I live, we were just talking, we live 15 minutes apart, right? Out in the woods out here. We live 15 minutes apart, nice community. It would be insane for you to pick up the phone and just be like, hey, man, I, you know what I mean? You don't know me that well. You've got, yeah. but if you come over and help me sight in a couple of rifles for deer season and my kids are playing with your kid and your wife and my wife become friends and you go hunting with me and then you come help me mow my. Now we're creating a context by which I'm going to feel okay saying, hey, tell me about this, man, because I'm not seeing this right. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And we tend to jump into this without building this. It's like trying to do the CrossFit games without doing any pull-ups before. And you can't do that, man. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's kind of where I land. What do you think about, like, first signs? Should it be, I'm not happy, so maybe you should start looking at talking to somebody? Or, or, to or me, making it's, some uh, changes? Or? To me, rage and anger tend to be... That's the first sign? When you find yourself saying, if they would just, and I don't care who they is, and I don't care what just is, you say that word, when you've distilled the world down into a them and an action, that's probably you. Okay. When you find yourself, somebody cut you off in traffic, and you're overcome with rage... Right, somebody cuts me off, and I start down a path, man. My brain—it's just automatic. That guy sucks. He's just a drug addict. He's trying to kill everybody. Over time, I can do the work. And when people say do the work, it's changing my default setting so that that guy cuts me off, and I take a big deep breath and I exhale and I whisper a quick prayer and say, "Man, I hope you make it to see your wife at the hospital before she goes." I get to pick the story that I'm putting into that car about why that guy just cut me off. Yeah. When I find myself watching the news and <laughs> the other day, man, I was driving to work. It was about two weeks ago. I was driving to work. I had a bunch of stuff I had to take, like I had wardrobe changes. I got a guitar I was taking. I was taking all kinds of stuff. Dude, I left one important thing in my house about 20 minutes away from my home. And I just started screaming in the car, rage screaming, dude. And it was at myself like, you idiot, again. <laughs> then I started laughing because I know. And then I called. Justin, who's a, he's a coach for me. He's somebody that I talk to that he's a counselor role for, in my life. Yelling at myself in the car again. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so, right. But I, that was the trigger for me. Like I knew I, I want to yell at this high school referee at my kid's little league game. That is not a problem with him. That's a problem with me. It's a freaking little league game. Why am I so mad? Every time I see Joe Biden's face, I want to that's me. That's on me, right? He doesn't have the power to enrage me that way. I'm not going to give that up. So what is it about my world that I, right? So it's taking ownership of how I feel and rage and disconnection is off. That's the other one is people usually do this. They go at you or they run, they, they disengage. And if my wife comes home and I feel myself just want to turn or I just head into the bathroom or uh, men are notorious about wife comes home and 
I'm just going to go spend an hour in the bathroom, right? I'm just going to close the door and turn the fan on and just hang out for a while. That's, that's, that's just disengaging, right? Yeah. What is it about her? My two kids come in and they're a lot and they're loud. I'm just going to get away. Like those are signs. But you sit down with somebody that you love, somebody you trust or a professional and just say, I'm, I'm finding myself disengaging from life. I'm finding myself wanting to swing and hit everything, which means I'm activated and I shouldn't be activated by my life. Right. Those are a couple of ways just to know. Yeah. And there is no, uh, like, you know, on Dave's show, they, people come do their debt free screen. I don't think there's such thing as a anxiety free screen. Like I'm not anxious. Right. As soon as you do that, you're going to walk out in the parking lot. Someone's going to call you and say, Hey, mom's got cancer. Right. That the goal isn't to not have anxiety or to not ever have seasons of depression, not to be sad. The goal is, can I create a firm foundation so that when those things come, I can weather that storm. I got a tribe, I got a gang, I got a community of people I can call that can bring me food, that can be with my wife when I take my kid to the ER. Whatever I got to do, I got people with me, right? It's it's not to live a non-happy life. I think happy is like uh, cocaine and cotton candy, man. It's just wispy, right? Yeah. Happiness is, comes in glimpses. It comes in moments. It's not the end goal. That's great advice. Do you think the mental health, st- the, the the stigma to go get help, I, I personally feel like that's starting to go away and it's it's becoming more accepted too. Yeah, and again, I, I, it's a double-edged sword. It's become, I'm so grateful that people can say the words, I'm not okay, right? If you talk to some old World War II vets, I've heard, I would have done anything to tell somebody what I was going through, right? And I didn't have, I, it, it, it didn't exist. I, I, the yeah. words in my mouth weren't even formed, right? There was no such thing as depression. There was just go to work and just go to work. And I would have done it. Like, like I've seen some of those videos where they're just weeping. Like, man, I would love to have told somebody what yeah. I actually did or what I saw, what I experienced. So I think there's beauty in that. My fear is that we were pathologizing normal life. The number of people who came into my office and said, hey, I've got depression. My dad just walked out on my mom. I'd say, hey, that's not depression. You're sad. And you're supposed to I be see sad. I what you mean. Right? Yep. Um, you saw somebody get shot and killed. That's supposed to be hard to digest. Like, if you are able to just digest that and go to the supermarket, probably should go talk to Right? So we've pathologized any sort of uncomfortable feeling. And made it a diagnostic and made it a crisis and made it someone you got to go talk to a professional about. And so it's a double-edged sword. I love that people are talking about it. People are going to get the help they need, going to say, hey, I'm not okay. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.